Why? Why are you looking at me? Because I'm waiting for you to do something like dig, 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 dig. Well, I'm not just like a content machine. I can't top myself each week. Okay. Dink, okay. dink, 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 comma, dink, comma, dink, dink, dot, dot, dot. One more dink. Wow. Okay. Thank you. K N I D. Dink spelled backwards. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> My name is Julian. Stop introducing yourself. No, no I don't only, like this new thing where you introduce yourself. The only reason it's why... It's weird. Well, the only reason why I did it again this week is because you don't like it. Oh, thank you. I love that about you, my friend. <laughs> Build your website with Squarespace. <laughs> Seriously, Squarespace is a great product. You should use it Seriously. to build your website. Go to squarespace.com slash Jenna Julian. Save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Uh, or give it a free trial, 24-7 customer support, amazing service. Also, guys, MeUndies, the softest underwear in the world, expanding their arsenal to bralettes, socks, even doggy bandanas that they just sent out to us. Oh, my God. They are so That's nice. They're so cute. They have boxer briefs. They have uh, couples collections. They have onesies, socks. new designs all the time. Go to MeUndies.com, M-E-U-N-D-I-E-S.com, slash Jenna Julian. Get 15% off your first pair of free shipping and 100% satisfaction guarantee. Thank you, sponsors. Thank you, sponsors. This podcast marks a very important milestone. I'd say so. For us. For us. I mean. And we didn't think it was going to be like this. No. There's a greyhound in the room. A full size greyhound do you remember the podcast that we did where we scratched off like one dollar lottery tickets yep. so that maybe someday we could afford a house so that we could have a greyhound i remember that i put the racing greyhounds in the background and th- now we are doing a podcast with a greyhound in the room we're telling the truth <laughs> <laughs> i don't know how to show you can't you can't see her but we're telling She's... the truth here no this is what we'll do ready okay yeah go ahead i uh, watch this watch this ingenuity right here Okay, you guys can see my phone, right? Okay, they can't. Um, it's they acting can't, as a mirror. They can't see that. Yeah, they can. They can't see that, especially okay. not if they're listening to the podcast. Okay, I gotta, I gotta figure this out now because I'm okay. Julie, <laughs> this is not working. No. Nope. Oh, that's above the frame. No. Nope. Oh, this is not okay. Here, ready? Look, it's on camera. Look, flip to the side, take a picture, look back, most recent picture. Okay, wow, we're all amazed. Oh my God, it's <laughs> real. He's so cute. Uh, Bunny, our new greyhound that we adopted. If you are under a rock and you haven't heard, we adopted our own greyhound this week. Jenna made a whole really, really well put together um, comprehensive video where we filmed the process from basically a whole week from the moment. Actually, it was five days, I think. Yeah, I guess it was five days of filming. Yeah. Um, we got, we started filming the moment we got the call that she was, you know, recommended to us to be our adopted dog all the way until like two days ago, three days ago. Mm-hmm. Um, we did it. We got a greyhound. Her name is Bunny. And we're going to talk about that today because I feel like that's like a huge life thing that we should talk about. Totally. Well, in her ears, are her, she has a tattoo. I think she <clears throat> was, you know, in the racing registry yeah but then that she never raced and then was a blood donor dog but she has her birthday tattooed in her ear she's three years old now and her birthday tattoo says six eight one five five which means june 8th is her birthday and she is the fifth puppy her of litter. her litter but that be four. still makes her a gemini and it still makes kermit's birthday last <laughs> we have four, gemini's. four dogs all Geminis huh? and Kermit still has the last birthday. It's like another birthday he has to endure in order to get to his birthday. <laughs> remember that one believe? year we forgot his birthday? Like no. we actually <laughs> forgot that it was his birthday. We remembered that day. It's not like we completely forgot about but it. But we remembered as in like we were on, on the way to our workout. And we're like, oh shit, today's Kermit's birthday. Yeah. Whereas Marvel's birthday, we wake up, we're like, oh, Marvel's birthday. Yeah. We're going straight to the pet store the whole day. We're taking off work, our workouts. We're not doing anything. It's all about you. Meanwhile, we're like, oh yeah, it's Kermit's birthday. Watch her for a second. So this is a big deal because this is Marble, the- Marble's crawling over. Marble. We're just trying to give her her space. So forgive us if we're also dog babysitting the whole time. 
Hey, Mumble. Oh, do you want to come up in your spot? Sorry, there was some dog kissing and loving going on in the three little dogs' bed. And so he was on his spot. But let me get him in his spot. Come here. Hi. Wow, chicken. Oh, it's a chicken. So we, okay. ha- um, <clears throat> we didn't expect Bunny to be in this room with us right now while we were recording. So um, She's had a hard time with, like, every room, you know? Like, well, our bedroom, I think she was super easy about. But the kitchen, she's not really ventured too much into. The living room, she's getting better about exploring a little more curious. The front hall, the office room. Hasn't gone to the dining room. She likes to sit in the game room with us at this point. But, she, like, when we were about to record the podcast, we were like, you know, what should we do with Bunny? Like, we, she knows she's comfortable um, on her bed in the living room. She's also very comfortable sitting on the pool lounger outside. But if we're not going to be able to supervise her, uh, we're not going to leave her out there, obviously. Um, but so we were like, maybe we put her on the bed downstairs or... You know, we come upstairs and we were fully prepared to sort of have the camera set up so we could baby monitor her while she's sitting on the um, cushion downstairs, her bed. And she followed us up the stairs and wanted to come in here. And this is like, I know you guys can't see, but there's like big lights, you know, camera. There's a TV screen and a uh, computer monitor and as what well as a, what else? a fan. You what? What else in the corner of the room? Two boxes of polyfill. Yes, you forgot that part. Sorry, just wanted to. What are you trying to that. say? Uh, you're hoarding polyfill in our podcast room. We can use it someday. No, we can. <laughs> yes, we can. We we well, literally haven't even to... gotten rid of the jeans yet. Every guest I'm that's very... walked into our house since that video has thought maybe we're collecting people's bottom halves. I'm very thankful that Bunny hasn't decided that those pairs of jeans with stuffing in them are not toys. I'm thankful for that too. So she followed us in here and. We still, you know, have not really worked on the TV screen thing with her. But for some reason, she's not perceiving the monitor as a TV screen right now. Um, she's okay I, with computer screens. Well, yeah. So TV in the living room is like really big and really high. But it's in the living room. It's pronounced. It's the only thing on the wall. This this is hidden by two yeah. giant lights, which yeah. I'm sure actually is mainly hiding it. And then there's sound foam too Mm -hmm. and she's kind of in the corner so i don't think she actually sees the screen i feel like if she were to maybe see it it might startle her a little bit but i was we we were not expecting her to be in here while we recorded so we're both Mm -mm. very pleasantly surprised today has been like a monumental day for her she's made so Mm -hmm. many strides today specifically like we're working with her and today's day seven today's day seven and it's like the first day where we feel like, okay, this is progress. Yeah. But we're working with her all day. Like we haven't we haven't gone to a workout for a week. Mm-hmm. I've barely trained jujitsu. I mean, we're like our lives are kind of on hold right now because mm-hmm. we're raising this girl and we're teaching her how to be a dog. And so every day we're taking her for a walk. But even just like getting to the point where we're like feeding her or like walking her outside. Like yeah, everything all of that takes, takes a very so long time. time right now. So, yeah. Like a walk that would usually take us about forty minutes is now taking us an hour hour and a half half or two hours and getting there is a process and getting her to eat is a process everything is timid and scared and needs help you know and we're you know we're trying our best to focus on the small little victories each day but today was a very good day and it it's no surprise that today is the day she wanted to just follow us up here because she wanted to be with us she walked up the stairs all by herself yeah if you've watched the video, you know that she didn't know how to walk upstairs. So the fact that a week later she's taking a whole flight of stairs by herself, it's awesome. But so she's sitting in the corner. She does like corners. That makes her feel safe. And she likes her crate. Uh, but she's sitting in her bed. What's she doing? She's Sleeping. Laying down. She's knocked. She's pretty tired. We, yeah. we did a lot today. Yeah, we've been going on the long walks. And man, it's been it's been a, uh, one of the most intense weeks of my life, mm-hmm. I think. And I'm so happy. I'm like, so I'm starting to feel a little bit relieved. Yeah. You know, like the relief is finally coming. Yeah. It was a mix of emotions going on. Very intense emotions going on that first week. I cried almost every single day that we've had her. I haven't cried today. I'm proud of myself. I hope soon they turn into like really, really happy tears. You know what I'm saying? No, it's, it's really stressful. And, uh, you know, I talked about it in the video, but literally yesterday, I like had broke down to Rome because she was here and I was like crying. It was like, you know, a mess and everything's very overwhelming because uh, she was resource guarding inside, which means 
something, a toy or food or a bed, those are your dog's resources. And if they perceive them as mine, you know, and, and they feel like that's being threatened, like maybe you give a dog a bone or a rawhide or whatever, you can try and take it from them and they growl at you. You know, if you have a little dog, it's whatever. And these guys have all sorted that out amongst themselves and they don't resource guard with us or with each other, really. If anything, Peach steals Kermit's chew and then Kermit sits at me and screams until I take it back from her. <laughs> and even if, you know, our, our Iggy's and Marbles, whatever, resource guard, anything, there's very low stakes. No one's getting hurt. You know, there's well, not. They have an established pack dynamic. They have as a well. pack dynamic and a hierarchy, but even so, they're all small dogs and mm-hmm. they're all relatively harmless. One of them has no teeth. One of them has no, has no teeth. Kermit is losing teeth, you know, each year. Peachy <laughs> is, you know, she, ain't, she she's the most beta girl in the world. So, yeah, introducing a big dog, let alone a Greyhound rescue, has, mm-hmm. has been a whole big old challenge for everybody. Right. And like one of the most positive experiences with well the organization gray save in particular but i imagine a lot of adoption agencies is that they don't say okay congratulations here's your dog and then you know that's it Bye. they gave us mm. resources and one of those was a dog behaviorist was she behavioral trainer yeah uh, yeah her name's bonnie she's incredible and she just like you know she lives an hour away from here and she volunteers her time because, you know, Grace Save, like a lot of dog adoption agencies, it, you know, it's a nonprofit. Yeah. They might have someone that can help you. But you know, if we lived near her, obviously, I think she would, you know, come over and help us. She does it for the service, like in general, just to do right by the dogs. But because we live an hour away, she just had like an hour long phone call with Julian and I was gone. But like an hour long phone call just talking to you and just helping you and, you know, giving you good information. And there's so many really good resources online. Like I've been looking at the forum, like Gray Talk a lot. And there's a lot of people that not only normalize your experiences, but also, you know, help you work through them, you know. And um, it's just really it was invaluable to have someone to speak on the phone with you while also being able to answer your personal questions for your personal situation, you know. And it was just like. It's given us really like a lot of confidence and we've had success with that like right away. Yeah. And I think one of the things that makes um, an organization like Gray Save special is that, like you said, it's, you know, it's not any other adoption agency or rescue or whatever where they give you the dog. They're like, thanks. You did great. Bye. Yeah. I don't think there's a lot like a ton of those. Well, I'm just saying. They always try and give resources. Well, yeah, sure. Yeah. Hopefully. Sure. This is my first rescue ever. Mm -hmm. And this is my first experience with anything like this. Um, And obviously we kind of jumped into the deep end with, you know, a a, a greyhound is a, is a very complex dog Mm -hmm. to rescue, especially when they're timid and they have been to the track and whatever. Like it's just a complex dog. And they're gentle natured and they like to be trained gently. (laughs) They're gentle. Yeah. But you know, this is something that we, as much as we wanted to do and we've talked about it and we love greyhounds, we love the breed. It's not an easy, quick, okay, we got a greyhound. Now they're sweet. Now they're part of the family and everything's fine. It's, it's a very, it's a very intense process. And what I was saying is, you know, having, an organization like Grace Save um, facilitate these adoptions the way they do with the foster homes, with the um, volunteer veterinarians, with the volunteer behavioral therapists and mm-hmm. trainer, like all of these resources that they give you and the fact that they're checking in on you. So we don't have to feel alone. So they, yeah. I mean, it's a, yeah. it's a scary process in the mm-hmm. beginning. And so, yeah, we've, we've been very like fortunate and happy that they've kind of helped us through this whole thing. But yeah, I, I sat on the phone with Bonnie yesterday for an hour um, and, she, you know, just hearing the way she was wording things and how she was explaining kind of the dynamics and how dogs perceive things w- in ways that you kind of wouldn't really think about unless you're Jenna and you're researching this shit all day and night, um, was really helpful. And even today and last night, actually, I was starting to put some of it into practice and to see it actually work and mm-hmm. to see little things click for both Bunny and myself, just the world, the world, the difference. Mm-hmm. And it encourages me and you so much more. Um, and I don't think it was a coincidence that the day after that call is our best day with her yet. Yeah. You know, I think there's a lot of things that fed to that, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like, I have cried over bunny over things like, you know, her being very fearful and how hard it is to watch a dog that's, you know, scared 
because it, it just breaks my heart. But I also, you know, cried because of the the resource guarding with the toy, uh, which we've tested a couple times inside and outside. And outside, she's okay because she's relaxed. You know, it's not filled with people things. And yeah, she loves to be outside. She just, yeah, she was okay with the toy. And uh, inside, when she's in her bed and she you knows she's a little stressed and she's a little excited. And now I finally get a toy and this is mine. And she's a dog that's never, like, had stuff you know like yeah. oh i'm so excited i finally get my own toy you know mm -hmm. and greyhounds stay with their siblings for a lot longer than other dogs when they are in that racing environment and you know that's their communication with each other that's acceptable communication with each other like i growl at you as loud as i can until you run away and i, I take this piece of food and this is mine mm -hmm. you know um but with people obviously your first reaction is to be frightened by it. You know, it was scary the first couple of times that we heard her resource guard and that, you know, made me cry later because I'm a big, soft, weak bitch. But no, it's, <laughs> it's jarring. It's like, you know, it, it especially you feel having terrible. never had a big dog. Yeah, because I'm like, I'm, I feel terrible that what an enjoyable experience for you to play with a toy and I want you to have a toy and I want to play with you and I want to like enjoy my time with you. I love you, you know, and it hurts my my heart that you think like i'm gonna take it from you and not, not give it back like yeah. what a what a terrible thing for her to have to feel and you know we worked a lot today on positive reinforcement on the walk and you know when she is being curious like when she came up here and it's just like a bunch of yes like bunny good and yeah. like and she's starting to respond more when, and more to yeah. praise yeah and um when she's like being curious and walking around like it's a great time to give her positive reinforcement because we can't do that when she's being fearful and you know running away and that's not a good time to give praise because that's reinforcing yes be scared you know yeah but uh you know we had a really good day and we tested the resource guarding again and a lot of it has to do with just basic trust with us like if i, I don't know you I'm not going to give you this toy back or you don't take this from me. But, you know, the more she knows us and trusts us, I have so much hope that this is something that's going <clears> to <throat> be way less of an issue in the future. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just really rewarding to see sort of like the first steps of, you know, your hard work with her, like starting to pay off because, you know, when you rescue a dog, when you, when you have a puppy, you get like love immediately, you know, yeah. it's like, oh and my that's God. Kind of all we've known. Yeah. And then when you have a rescue dog, it takes a long time to get some love back. Yeah. But when you do it, it just feels so special and rewarding. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And um, one of the things that we're really grateful for is, you know, obviously, like everything in life, we're very grateful to be able to share this experience with you and the internet. Um, partially because it's exciting and we, we want you guys to know about our lives and everything. But also because, like Jenna was saying, like, Having you guys chime in about your experiences is really, helpful. It is helpful. It normalizes it. It makes us feel like we're not in this alone and that other people have done this and have had the same struggles. Um, and a comment that I've seen, you know, around a lot ever since we announced Bunny is from people who have both adopted and rescued greyhounds, but also just adopted and rescued other dogs, mm -hmm. explaining that like that first that first bit of time when you're just like so lost. Mm -hmm and you're so frustrated and you're sad all of these emotions to like any sort of improvement whether it's a month a year two years ten years later like that makes it worth it mm -hmm. and that's what people have been saying and it's just like man like you know it really helps it does it does um because look how far we've come in one week you know yeah. and that feeling that we have of like man we're, we're actually doing it mm -hmm. you know she's improving she's getting happier and more comfortable mm -hmm. you know it's it's a very like it's something that you can't really explain to someone you kind of just have to go through it yeah and we're going through it yeah it was a lot i would categorize this first week as one of the hardest things that i've ever really done yeah, you know likewise, yeah. like college softball very difficult graduate school pretty difficult you know well, I mean, there's a Rescue lot of... Rescuing a greyhound. Oh, my God. I'm going to cry. There's, cry, 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 cry. But there's so many things in your life that you've done, right, that are hard like, yeah. on paper and they're yeah. challenging. But at least for you, there is one... There is like you, you visualize a path of like, okay, how am I going to do this? Mm -hmm. And then that's it. And then you do it and it's up to you. And if it's a hard, it's hard. But this is like, it's a lot different because you're like, okay, this is what I do. This is the right thing. And then it's like, oh, no, she growled. 
oh no, she's sad. Oh no, she's scared. What am I doing? What am I doing wrong? Mm. And you start to doubt yourself and that yeah, becomes a whole other. Those are some of the things that, you know, she needs to go through in order to get to the trusting, loving she and home we. that, yeah, that, yeah. you know, we all deserve. Yeah. But, you know, there was a time there when I was, when she's resource guarding, I was very scared of, you know, don't show her that I'm scared. And uh, I don't, I, we do a thing called trading up where that's how you teach drop it. And, you know, when she has the toy and she's resource guarding and growling, you respect that growl and, you know, you back off. But then it's like, hey, look at this beautiful bunch of feet that I have that's way more exciting than your toy, yeah. you know. And she's like, oh, hell yeah. yeah drops the toy right <laughs> away. And then you just throw in a drop it in there. And all of a sudden she's learning drop right, it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's hard in those moments with a dog that, you know, you've only had for a week that's like get the fuck away from me when I'm like, I love you. I love dogs. Like yeah. I just want to love you. And it's hard sometimes, you know, yeah. I just want to hug you and kiss you and cuddle you. But like, I know you're not ready for that right now. I know. But you know, she is like, <clears throat> we've talked a lot about like how she's kind of the perfect dog. Well, a greyhound is the perfect dog for but us. That's why we, we adopted a greyhound. We've yeah. always wanted a greyhound. We have other sight hounds, which are a little different, but we've always thought that this is like the perfect dog for our lives. Yeah. We, you know, tell the way, them why. Well, cause y'all already know. We both work from home. We, uh, walk a, one group of dogs once to maybe twice a day, but we're home and we're lounging and we're, uh, whether we're working or we're chilling, we're, we're kind of in one place and greyhounds and Italian greyhounds, they like to loaf. They like to chill. And they like to be near you. And they like to be near you. And all of those things are completely possible and realistic with our situation. We're not going to an office. We don't have to go film on set. There's nothing like out in the world. We can be there with them pretty much all day, every day, Mm -hmm. barring any sort of trip or whatever that we're taking. And we go to the grocery store and we go to the gym and, you know, we do all of like, you know, normal amount of leaving the house for us. and, And, but it's not, a nine to five and you know, not that there's anything wrong with people that have dogs that have nine to fives, but, um, it's, it's or even just, greyhounds like that. Right. That's possible. It's a thing yeah. that people do, yeah. but it's like, because we are home and we have a yard and it's fenced in and, you know, we're here and we have other sight hounds and we know what they're like. And, you know, they have their own special needs and quirks and just, <clears throat> I would love to have a dog that just wants to loaf around at home get one good like <clears throat> i'm gonna pants and get tired walk and now if you want to go lay around so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna be here we don't leave the house for super long periods of time regularly which yeah is, usually it's one of us leaving anyway well i mean you guys have seen how <clears throat> peach is really pretty good but kermit i think is the perfect embodiment of a dog a sight hound like they're your fucking shadow <clears throat> man like yeah. he just he i haven't gone into a room yeah. alone in nine years yeah you know yeah. and i think a lot of people with greyhounds whippets italian greyhounds would tell you the same thing like they they some of them are i guess not as like that like peachy but she follows you everywhere but yeah kermit kermit is just glued to me yeah everywhere. in fact like sometimes he knows how to orbit you to where i i can't get him because <laughs> he knows what side of you to be on while you're even moving it's very imp- impressive um, but, but they can be, they can have separation anxiety. Yeah. It's a real thing yeah. for, uh, sight hounds. So yeah. And we're very, we just have like a, a perfect situation for to have a sight hound that needs a home. Yeah. And we're very early in the stages of training her with leaving the house. Both of us leaving the house. Yeah. We've done a couple tests where we leave for a couple minutes and we have the camera, the you know baby camera on her so we can watch. She doesn't care. We yeah, leave, she really is not just struggling with bed. that right so, now. So, like, all the signs are there that this is going to be good. Yeah, and we hope so. I mean, what what makes me feel good is that, you know, when we came up here to podcast, she followed she us. She wanted to be with us. And that's, like... It's the first time she's kind of yeah, shown that. For those of you that have rescued animals, like, that, that like, moment of, like, oh, my God, you want to come with us? Like, how fucking special? I'm going to cry, you yeah. know? Um. But yeah, she hasn't shown signs of separation anxiety, but I am glad that she wants to be with us because we usually have three dogs in this podcast room. Like, <clears throat> come on in, girl. We're already ready for you to be here and, and in the game room and, you know, hanging out with us. And like, she's so good about us streaming. We, we've we almost yeah, fully desensitized there. her to our stream room. The only thing left to it's really get over is the fridge. We have the... It makes one... She doesn't mind the sound of it being on, but it makes like a clicking noise every once in a while that she's like, excuse me. Yeah. 
But um, Jenna talks about the t like TVs. She's scared of a big living room TV. Turn it on. She really doesn't like it. We have have to to work work on that. that. We'll have to work on that. But we both told ourselves we're like, okay, if we're gonna have her in the stream room, we need to show her that monitors, PC monitors, are not bad. I'd say it only took her about ten or fifteen. Took her like ten minutes. We went up and we brought her in the room. We touched the monitors. We were like, it's okay. We touched them so she could see that it wasn't hurting. She sniffed them. We turned them on. We had gameplay going so she could see the movement. Just kind of like her understanding that it's just a flat screen. It's not gonna get her. But she got that really quick. And now. We'll stream for our long streams as we do. Last night we went like eight and a half, nine hours. She was in the room the whole time, chilling. Like, yeah, I mean, let she her had out a once. potty break. Yeah. She had some water. But I mean, come on. That's amazing. But she was sleeping, yeah. She's because sleeping. that's what all these guys do when we stream. Yeah, They're I'm, like, okay, I'm, I'm down. I'm sitting right, like Marble sits in a spot like this on my desk. Like facing me, he God, gets like good so mama. Stationary. He gets good pets the whole time. Like it's the same as you know if you come home from work or whatever, and you sit on the couch with your dogs, and they just want to snuggle up to you. It's like that. They're just on my desk. They're on our desk, yeah. And we both have like fairly large desks to where we can have we all the more little... than half of my desk is a dog bed. Well, no, all of your desk is a dog bed because Kermit <laughs> will get up from a nap and stand on your keyboard like it's his. And then Dude, you just start like you just start disconnecting from Discord and he like closes the game. Uh, oh, it's a mess. I'm like, Carmen. God. That boy. He needs to understand boundaries. Which yeah. is another thing we're working with. He's doing him on. he's doing okay though. He is. And so is Peachy. Yeah. And Peachy's showing more interest in her because she's gaining confidence. Yeah. You know, like dogs really respond well to other socially confident dogs. <clears throat> And, yeah. you know, I think they could obviously tell that she's having a hard time. So they're not over there being like, be my friend, be my friend, be my friend, you know? Yeah. But she's gaining more confidence. And even in here, Peachy was like, went over there and visited her for a second, mm-hmm. not getting in her bed, but yeah. saying hello. Yeah. Well, speaking of confidence, you're not uh, oh, ever God. as confident oh, as God, you could be we when you're wearing the, like amazing, amazing three times softer than cotton underwear by me on these. That was, you know, really I mean, so how can you get more confident Jordan. than that? You're walking around, your bum's supported, you're feeling nice and soft, good airflow. It's just a great pair of underwear. And you could be wearing it and up your confidence by two points. Bam, right at the top. Then you get a nice design from me undies. They have new designs all the time. They're working with cool artists. Bump another two points. Your confidence just went up four points on the scale. Okay, wow. you're leveling up with me undies. Uh, they just dropped. I I'm stupid because I forgot the name, but it's something like Buddies Bunny Buddy Bunnies something with it's the bandanas for dogs. Oh Little yeah, Buddy something. I don't something. know what they I don't called know. them. They're dog bandanas. Dog though. bandanas, and they're they're literally the same materials as underwear, so they're like so soft. And I put one on Peach, and she looks so cute. And it's like a light material. Yeah. Um, but me undies is truly just something special. They have amazing underwear. I can only imagine the bralettes feel great. I've never worn one. I mean, if you want Boy, to send me I'm one, I'm gonna throw one on you. If you want to send me one, feels so good. I will put it on. It feels so supported. Their socks are my favorite. Just all the greatest underwear. Literally three times softer than cotton. Um, and you can try now the new boxer brief with the fly, which is the same great cut as the boxer brief, but now with the added option of guys who prefer to go through the gate versus over the fence. <clears throat> what? What? I'm just sitting. Sometimes you just got to go through the gate. I'm just sitting here. If the option's there, I'm going through the gate. I'm literally just sitting Don't even need a key. <laughs> just sitting Don't here. even need a key. <laughs> oh, my God. Should we just end the podcast there? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Guys, go to meundies, M-E-U-N-D-I-E-S dot com slash Jen and Julian. Get 15% off your first pair of free shipping and satisfaction, 100% guaranteed. You will uh, not be sorry. I promise. Also, guys, if you're going to build your website, do it with Squarespace. What a great service to build an awesome looking website without having to learn a whole bunch of crazy shit that you think you might need to learn. Squarespace makes it easy. They have 24-7 customer support, literally live customer support. So if you're in the middle of the night stuck on a problem, they'll help you. They also have live webinars. So you can join the live webinar and pick up all sorts. Careful. He's sleeping. He might not like that. I've made a clicking noise and then touched his bed. He knows I'm coming. Unlike you, <laughs> okay, don't do it again. Uh, you can learn a whole bunch of different things from the online webinars that they have. Uh, designing and maintaining a website can be overwhelming with fonts, images, plugins, hosting. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that makes it really easy to do that. Um, 
and they give you options to have all sorts of different pre-built templates that you can modify make it look certain ways on mobile and tablets um and you can have online stores and shops built into your website as well. Check it out. It's a really, really great service. You can do a free trial right now, or you can get 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain when you go to Squarespace, S-Q-U-A-R-E-S-P-A-C-E.com slash Jenna Julian, or click the link in the description below. What are you doing? Thank you, sponsors. We're getting a little brigade. Can I roll him completely over? Mabel, come. Boy, you can try. Come here. Mabel. Hi. Oh. Oh, there's nowhere to go. Then... <laughs> Oh, do you know why we call him Burgess? Because we called him. He's a ham. He likes to ham it up. He's a hamburguesa. And then you just cut a out him. And then he's a Burgess. He's a Burgess. That's what we call him. He flips on around. You, you, you know what's so funny is like when what? people comment on a video or a picture and they're like, "Oh, look at the Burgess," and I'm like, "How did?" How, How did you know, know we call him that? But it's like we've definitely said it. Embrageza y queso. Wow. Mabel, straighten your leg. Good boy. Wait, what the hell? Why do you want him to straighten his leg? Yes. Okay, you know, that's like a lot of energy for him. He, this is his speed right now. He's just trying to. Uh, Bunny's also learning my me. yell. She knows what it sounds like when I'm gaming and I scream. You don't scream. Well, I don't scream, but I laugh really loud. Yeah, it's like loud laughter. She's getting accustomed to it, though. You did like a wheeze laugh last night, and she got up and was like, um. <laughs> what the fuck was that, bitch? Yeah, I would say that, like a new sound that she hasn't heard before, like she'll get up and she's a little like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, we're being cautious with the sounds. Like even when you're clapping to do this, you're like watching her like. Yeah. Are you cool with clapping? Or? Yeah. Yeah, it's honestly like a lot of sounds are pretty okay for her. She's more kind of interested in sights but yeah there i mean like the first time i did the dishes or made a smoothie like she was like she was cool with the blender and she was like okay i was shocked yeah i mean a lot of the things that we really kind of envision as being triggering for the dogs like sound wise is not is not and then things that you don't think are yeah yeah like she uh, the the walk that we go on there's like a uh, a baseball field that has like a dugout or like a building. It's the announcer's booth. Announcer's with, like, the, booth. The equipment yeah. room underneath. And it's or painted blue, but it's just a, a building. It's just like a square building. And she's really scared of it. Mm-hmm. So it's like right in the beginning of our walk. So we get out and she sees it. And she was much better today. But like it's it's stuff that you just don't even think twice about. And I'm thinking about making her a little um like just thing that goes around her neck and over her back with iron on letters that says I'm training Mm -hmm. while we're out in the world because people are being a little annoying. Yeah. That is something we're kind of running into with people. Bunny is standing in front of, you know, we have four dogs. We're walking them. One of us walks three. The other walks bunny. Right. And these guys have all been really, really, really good about, we need to take a lot of breaks, like a lot of standing there, a lot of working with bunny. So it's not just like we're walking around the park, you know, it's like, a lot of stop and go and stop and go and stop and go. And so Bunny's pretty scared of the this one particular building. And so we're standing there for, you know, a while. And we're just talking and she's being good. And she's like looking and watching. And then, you know, she'll have moments of like, okay, I want to turn around and I don't want to look. And then, you know, encouraging to be her to be curious again and like, you know, watch and look and watch me. We're working on watch me. Yeah. We're working on <clears throat> a lot of yes. And, you know, when she's being you know yeah. inquisitive without fear and um so we're doing that and this woman just walks by with her dog and she just keeps shouting at us he's friendly he's friendly and it was at a time when bunny was turned around from the building and i was like okay thank you uh you know we're not gonna have them meet any dogs she's just scared of that building you know like a st- stuff that you wouldn't think about either but i'm like i appreciate that you dog's friendly but like it's amazing to me that you can't read any dog body language or human whatsoever. body language <laughs> like we're standing here like looking at our dog not having talking any sort to her of- yeah like working with her you know and yet you need to scream at me she's friendly come meet my dog I'm like lady no not right now we're in the middle of something yeah, it's uh, that's definitely something that we're running into. Um, or yeah, like when when Bunny's a little afraid. We were at the pet store with her getting uh, another bed, and you know, there's a lot. There's like cars driving by and stuff, and you know, little bits of it are okay. And then when mm-hmm. she starts to get in that, like, I'm a little overwhelmed and I want to leave. You know, it's you're not gonna do a lot of desensitizing. She needs to be curious, not 
you know, fearful. Yeah. So when she gets into that, it's like, okay, sensory overload. Let's, let's move on. We can keep working on this. We don't, it doesn't need to be solved right away. You know, we just, yeah. And this woman just comes up to her and is asking us a million questions. And, you know, Julian's like helping her and, you know, turning her around and like doing this stuff. Just to, trying to make sure she's yeah, not going to okay. enter the, the fight or flight panic. Yeah. And this woman's touching her and she's just and like, she cannot read that Julian is trying to work with Bunny in this given moment. And instead is only just like, come here, baby. Oh, yeah. And despite <laughs> like, the fact that, oh and despite the fact that we're not really, you know, particularly confrontational people, if someone no. steps out of line, I'm happy to like stand up for myself. But yeah. We don't like seek out confrontation like some people. And so on top of the fact that we don't like to do that, it's not good energy for her to be around. No. So if someone's like, you know, stepping on our toes and I'm like, hey, back off, like, that's not good for Bunny to be around because she's like, okay, my owner's now she's in the state energy. of, yeah. So and I was so, thinking about making her a little thing that just says, I'm training. So then if people are like... Well, it's like a service dog then almost. Like people can look at the thing. And I like, want it to be very touch. homemade looking so that people are not confusing her with a service dog, but also that like you don't have people that are trying to overstep their boundaries. Just I think that's some a, sort of sign. a very clear message that's like... Uh, you know, if we're stopped and standing and your dog is excited to meet us, maybe you take one second and maybe ask the person. Because usually the, a lot of people around here are just like, okay, my dog wants to meet your dog, so here we go. Or my dog is yeah. off leash. Yeah. Oh, we man. see a lot of people around here that just don't abide by leash laws whatsoever. Not at all. And it's optional for like everyone in that's a That's obviously a concern. Um, but it... <laughs> But I think something like that, that just says, I'm training. That's like just yeah. one step for all of y'all that just don't read any kind of dog yeah. language whatsoever. I'm training. Just like, then you'll ask. I'm or training. then you'll talk. You'll ask us first. You know what I mean? What are you, at an auction? Are you auctioning off your dog? She's friendly. This, this one's one. this one's friendly. She wants to Here. play with y'all. I'm like, does my dog look like she wants to play right now? She's she's looking at a building and she's a little scared. Can you just let her look at the building? What if I had a tail in bet- between my legs right now? <laughs> Read it. Yeah, and I have no problem being like, I'm. Thank no, you. We, we've I'm had so to glad be like, she is. She's had to be like, scared of this no, building. Yeah. Right now, we're focusing on working on the building. The she's friendly you thing dogs, is so good. Ten though. out of ten. You dogs. Ten out of ten. The the friendly one is amazing because like before we had Bunny, I was walking the dogs alone, and um, this like medium sized dog just like kind of fast trots over to marbles Mm -hmm. to the point where marble gets freaked out and actually makes a sound like a preemptive sound so i scoop him up yeah like back off back off and so i scoop him up and the dog's like kind of wait why did you pick marble up oh just because he got spooked well the dog was going right for marble and marble like made a preemptive sound was like "Ah," oh i see like a freak out sound so i I scooped him up to this dog off leash off leash so i scoop marble up to save marble and 30 seconds later the guy walks over and says oh she's friendly well actually first of all that doesn't matter because your dog's off leash in a leash dog par- in a leashed human park and she shouldn't be off leash so that is an irrelevant detail and it's also a lie because yeah. your dog charged at my tiny dog yeah. whether or not they were trying to play to marbles it was right. like scared him shitless yeah so but i mean those he's friendly people okay th- there's a reason why you have a leash law it's to keep dog safe and even if your dog is friendly it's optional even if your dog is friendly what i appreciate is that how much we go on our walks you see people that are working with dogs especially on the bike path that we go on because it's so quiet we've seen now multiple dogs there people like really working hard with dogs that are you know wild or really growl and really bark at other dogs like Mm -hmm. and i just appreciate those people so much because those aren't the people with their dogs off leash like Imagine you and your friendly dog walking past that dog, yeah. you know, or charging that dog. Yeah. That, it's a big problem. Mm-hmm. And I just feel yeah. really bad for the people that are working. So like Bunny's a little fearful, but, you know, we're not dealing with a dog that's super aggressive or like, you know, angry on walks and, you know, needs a lot of holding or, you know what I mean? But I, I just feel for those people that they're doing everything that they can to protect their dog and work with their dog and help them feel safe and confident and comfortable on a walk. And then here comes Joe Schmo with he's friendly. And, and that could undo a bunch of you're, progress. Yeah, you're undoing a bunch of progress yeah, for that Which person. is unfair because, you know, that progress is hard with dogs. I know. <clears throat> Sucks, man. 
Don't look at him like that. He's minding his own <laughs> business. At, I can't even look at him. I just, I can't believe, I'm so proud of her. She's sleeping like with her teeth out, like, <laughs> like a true greyhound. Uh, the picture you took of her is so freaking adorable today. She's very photogenic. It's funny how small her head looks in a picture. Like I know. her head is giant, but I know. when you take a picture of her straight on, it's it looks her like nose little... is in focus and it just looks like she looks like a Kermit. Yeah. She looks like she might be pretty little. Yeah. But then when you see her, you're like, wow, she's gigantic. But she's not even a gigantic greyhound. Her foster brothers, those are gigantic greyhounds. Those are horses. They are horses. Also, like another amazing, like I was saying, the foster situation where Grace Ave will, you know, let people be foster parents to mm-hmm. dogs. Like the foster group, the foster home and Those the foster people are father amazing. that we ha- had picked Bunny's bit Bunny up from from their house when we picked her up. Amazing. He he's is a, amazing. He's an, like an incredible guy. He has two greyhounds that are his, mm-hmm. and he fosters greyhounds, and he's, he's great with them. And it's just like incredible peace of mind it doesn't feel like we've kind of just been like left to deal with everything um well and i know like you know what he said to us too like part of being a foster is taking in dogs and getting you know attached to them seeing that like very beginning progress you know i I imagine when he got bunny there were like she was probably 20 times more timid and i know i'm excited to give her back when we because we're going on vacation soon and he volunteered to watch her which has made our life incredibly easy because asking anyone to come to our house and watch all four of these guys is way too much of a tall order and so yeah i'm excited to show him all of her progress and i'm sure he's going to be very excited but it's it for him to you know not only take care of an animal that's in need Mm -hmm. but also then say goodbye to her is like takes a lot it's like those people are incredible yeah Yeah. and anyone that fosters animals like i i don't it's amazing i it's so much yeah I mean, and I don't know how it goes with like the rules of like, if you foster an animal for so long, they're not adopted. Can you adopt it? Or maybe that's how they got some of their dogs. I think they have a foster to adopt system. Yeah. Yeah. But still, yeah, you're right. Like MVP for real. Unbelievable. Yeah. Well, a lot of like Gray Saver, I imagine other um, adoption agencies aren't like a brick and mortar place like you can't go there and go see their greyhounds it's all donations and fosters so without fosters where do they, you put the dogs they even? don't yeah they don't have a place where yeah. the dogs go yeah. you know what i mean so the system relies on people like that and it's like it's a hard job i'm sure it's a very rewarding job but like man the real mvp yeah and uh man so we get we get uh so we're we um we should announce it on the podcast. I, t- I told you last week we're going out of town for our first vacation of our lifetime. Um, next week, not lifetime. Ever. Well, our first vacation that we've ever taken together. Yeah, I've like, never I've never done a vacation. I don't yeah. know, like I've gone on trips, but I've never done a vacation trip. Yeah, um, when I was a kid, we actually did tell you. I told you last week, so you're good. But um, yeah, we have a whole another week with her to work with her, mm-hmm. and then we're going on vacation. We're gonna come back and keep working with her and keep you guys posted on all of what's going on and i'm gonna miss her i'm gonna miss her i mean i'm like gonna crazy. miss all my babies but yeah this is like this is the most i don't know it feels so special to have her in here and just chilling and relaxing because we know that that's what she is you know like yeah. i want i want to get my yayas out and then i want to lay around like a big loaf and yeah. i feel so happy that she f- is feeling comfortable to do that right mm-hmm. now yep and um as always like thank you guys for supporting us and being excited and happy for us with this whole thing and um we talked a lot a little about it on stream but you know you'll see her when you see her and we'll, yeah. we'll do our best to kind of share her with you um but as we as we're working with her and training her and getting to know her, it might be a little, it might be a little less like the way we treat the other dogs, where we're just posting about them and they're and we're they're in everything. We're making videos with them. Because it's not going to be the they're same. They're with us constantly. Yeah. So but. we we know that like it's a different situation. So we appreciate you guys. It is kind of nice though. In all the moments that I've been like, man, you know, I'm giving Bunny all the space that she needs, and I wish I could go over there and comfort her, and that actually meant something right now. When really the thing that means the most to her is just having a little space. Like 
I have three other dogs and I'm like, oh my God, come here. I need a hug. I, I love know. you. At the end of a long day with money, like Peach will come to me in bed and I'm like, come here. Like, I let me give you some you. love. I need to yeah. give you love just as much as you need some love. Yeah. And then she leaves me to cuddle with you. Oh, why did you just wake up like that, Bob? Bob, you good, fam? Okay. That, was that me? <laughs> Probably. What? I'm kidding. I don't know what it was. He <laughs> woke himself up. Um, well, we'll see you guys next week for another podcast. Thank you for hanging out and uh, be good. Have a good week. Bye. Bye.